Do you remember opening that first box of crayons when you were a kid? The vivid colors, the feel of them, even the smell. Well, Herb Williams never forgot that experience. In fact, he goes through countless crayons weekly in his work. Rob Wiles discovered how the Nashville artist has taken his crayon artistry to big new levels. Herb Williams spends a lot of time cutting up crayons. Lots of crayons. I get them in cases of 3,000 to a single case and 50 pound cases directly from Crayola. You know, and I, I tried making my own for a while, but I couldn't get, there's a particular scent in Crayola, you know, that um, I just felt like I was faking it, you know, because I couldn't get them to smell right. And um, so I just started ordering from them. I, I became a wholesaler and I've got millions now. But this isn't vandalism or even therapy. It's the beginning of creation, which began for Herb when he was a kid with a fixation. I was that, that strange kid you'd see who would carry around a fruitcake tin, you know, that you'd get for Christmas because I used my crayons so much they were like all in there and they're all, you know, nibbled down to just nubs because as soon as I would get them, I would draw with everything, you know, and just wear it all down so I had to keep them all together and an obsession we lived out in in the woods and we had a uh, big red clay cliffs you know out there and i would take my bowie knife and i would carve into the cliffs to try and make you know my own little mount rushmore or something you know but it was it was very satisfying um even then and it wasn't anything permanent or anything you know the rains would wash it away but um i think it at that age just seeing that you know, I needed to, to do something. It was something I couldn't not do. And now, years later, as a kid masquerading as an adult, Herb decided to return to that box of crayons. This should be plenty. I'll have to sculpt a form, you know, out of clay or wood, and then uh, coat it with fiberglass to protect it, and then paint it to look you know, like how I want it to look, and then I'll cut down thousands of crayons with uh, usually oversized dog toenail clippers are the best. And then we'll, uh, we'll take them and bond the crayons to the form using this archival glue I get out of Texas, man. They, man, everything's, you know, bigger in Texas. They just make it how you need to be, and it bonds the paper to the form like a, an eggshell, and really, protects it because I have to take a chisel to make changes you know and um, it's fun I love what they do to the surface um, you know whether I use the ends of the crayons or the the tips or the butts of them will really change the whole look of it you know make it more kinetic or more illustrative you know um, and that's a lot of fun to play with because there's such promise in that little box of crayons that everybody gets, you know, because there's so many possibilities before you even put one to the paper. And, and that's a lot of what drove me to work with like the whole stick of the crayon, because when you put it on the paper, it's never as saturated, as rich and thick with pigment as it is in that stick, you know, and there's just something so primally satisfying about working with it. And, working with hundreds of thousands of them. Yes, Herb loves his crayons, each one a pinpoint of color and texture. And then there's that other thing that draws him. I think it's the smell too, you know, because you're immediately, you know, it's hard for me to smell them anymore now that I'm, you know, I got millions in here, but it's really satisfying, man, um, because it is, you, you, it takes you back to when you could do anything or you you were whatever you wanted to be you know at that moment you didn't have all these preconceived notions you didn't know too much you knew just enough to be dangerous and um, I love I love thinking that way because crayons are a gateway drug when you were a kid in kindergarten and you were playing with your crayons your teacher might have said hey don't color outside the lines well this is one crayon artist who's not afraid to color outside the lines, or even outside the building.
I do these graffiti animals all around town at my favorite watering holes, you know, like at, at my favorite pub or restaurant place to, uh, I, that I like to frequent. And I'll, I'll go and paint like a deer or a fox, you know, on a, on a wall over there because being in the urban jungle, I miss, like I wanna see like a little animal walking around. I, I, you know, it's, it's strange, but being from the, you know, being a redneck in the, the woods and then living in a very urban environment with a lot of traffic, I, I yearn for things that are wild. Herb's got 20 or so of these animals painted around Nashville, and although they aren't made with his beloved crayons, they share Herb's common goal. Trying to make myself laugh and trying to have fun, you know, because that's just, I don't know, I don't think we have enough fun, you know. We need to, we need to set things aside to have more fun, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do. Sure, and also trying and succeeding at creating unique works of art that make us smile and think and remember when we were kids and the world waited inside a crayon box.